This grimoire who we're searching for is a Moloch like Bienfu, right? To be honest, I don't see how someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Lafayette said or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath your hat? Oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Could I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? That's another thing I can't say! It's all cans with you. All right. Is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh, I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you. Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces, but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Think of them as a convenient power-up. They're also known as common spirits. Don't even say that! We Norman hate being called that! Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable! That's why we work so hard to show how we're all different! That does explain your quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> Don't say that! I apologize if I'm being rude, but I have to ask. You're not Amanoch the Indian, are you? Of course I'm not. What would even make you ask such a thing? A shop in Isolt was selling Amanoch figurines that looked just like you. Oh, that. I distinctly remember whispering to the shopkeeper in his sleep, telling him not to sell those things. You showing up in his dreams probably only convinced him you were the real deal! You should sue for his use of your likeness and get proper compensation from that shopkeeper! Forget it. It's no concern. Yeah, you're right. It's not like they'd ever sell anyway. Oh? You think a figurine of mine wouldn't sell? You got this whole somber ennui thing going on. A figurine needs to be cute, like me! Then how about I turn you into a product? Me? Really? Oh yes. I'll have you stuffed and mounted. But since it'd be a unique piece, I'd have to price it a bit higher. M mounted? No, no, count me out! Oh, you're no fun. Now, what was it we were talking about? Whether or not you are the Empyrean Amenoch. Ah, yes, that's right. I'm no Empyrean. I'm just a simple girl. <sighs> it would be hard for anyone to worship an Empyrean like me, right? That's true. <clears throat> oh, uh, I mean, it just seems like you're the type who can see through anything, so... Perhaps seems less intimidating from a certain point of view. You're saying I'm scarier than an Empyrean? Not scarier, exactly. Just more of a... Savvy sort of woman. That's not a bad answer, but it won't get you out of the doghouse. From what we heard in Isult, demons are attacking villages, and more are growing upset with the Abbey. So I hadn't expected things in Haria Village to be so laid back. They might be on their best behavior because you're accompanied by an exorcist. Huh. I didn't know you could see the world in more than just black and white. The Abbey wouldn't entrust my responsibilities to someone who couldn't see beyond the surface. I have seen many things in my work. I've beheld both the light and the darkness in the world of men. Hmm. Despite that, no, because of that, I won't turn away from the wrongs that I encounter. Moreover, I have faith. I believe there is good in all our souls. The darkness, huh? Yes, like you. You're awfully direct. All right, time to start deciphering this scroll. Let's wait somewhere outside so Grimm can concentrate. Um, do you think maybe I could stay and watch? I really do want to study the ancient tongue. 
I promise I'll be quiet and not get in your way, teacher. What did you just say, child? Uh, that I'd be quiet and... No, what did you call me? Teacher? You said you didn't want to be called ma'am, so I thought maybe that'd work. Yes, satisfactory. All right, I'll teach you how to read Ancient Averost. Thank you so much, teacher! We'll leave you two alone then. Let us know if anything comes up. Eleanor, what's your game here? The mother and daughter, you mean? That's on me. I'll search for them myself. I don't care about that. Well, what then? Why are you actively helping us decipher the book when we're using it to thwart the Abbey's plans? You think I might be deliberately misleading you? Laying a trap of some sort for you all? Are you? I think you're a lot of things, demon. But foolish is not one of them. <sighs> I want to know... I want to know what Lord Artorius is trying to accomplish. And there's something happening in the world right now. I want to know what it is. Unfortunately, little old Eleanor has never been deemed trustworthy enough to be given such information. So, my only option is to find out for myself. You've got the soul searching down at least. The Abbey and your band of rogues follow two different paths. But something tells me either will lead me to the same destination. And so you don't see any need to lie to us? Exactly. And what'll you do if those truths don't line up cleanly with what you believe? I'm... not sure yet. As honest an answer as any. Either way, it looks like you'll be working with us for the near future. Yes, for now. Hey, could I ask you something? What is it? About the Therians. I've heard you call yourself a Therian before. Is there any particular insight you have about them? No, none. Artorius said I was one, that's all. And that doesn't bother you? Does it bother you? Nope, not at all. If you're not worried, then neither am I. I'm surrounded by freaks. But, was that truly the reason Ceres chose me? Velvet keeps picking on Madame Eleanor! They're total opposites, so I know they're just gonna clash sometimes, but Velvet takes it too far! You really think they're totally opposite? If Madame Eleanor is a white lily, then Velvet is a black rose. If Madame Eleanor is a soaring pegasus, then Velvet is a wolf in the shadows. If Madame Eleanor is a plate of spaghetti carbonara, Velvet is squid ink noodles with seaweed. I don't follow you completely, but I think I get the point. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. The two have nothing at all in common. And since they don't share anything in common, some fighting now and then just can't be helped. Well, they both have beautiful hair. Okay, but we're talking a noble exorcist and an aloof demon. Eleanor sometimes treats you coldly. And Velvet has helped me more times than I can count. Madam Eleanor gives herself fully to the salvation of others, but Velvet is bent solely on revenge. That means they're both motivated by thoughts of others. How is the chill and talkative Madam Eleanor at all the same as the brooding, taciturn Velvet? Both of them talk to me when it's just the two of us together. You're just trying to be contrary. I'm only telling you what I've experienced. Yeah. Actually, I feel that Madame Eleanor isn't really reaching out to me. It's all right if Eleanor doesn't want to talk to you. I'm here for you, Bienfu. You aren't alone. That just makes me feel lonelier. Yeah. You two are opposites yourselves. Huh? Laffy said, have you been taking care of that rhino stagroy? Of course. I make sure to feed it every night before I go to sleep, since it's nocturnal. How long are you going to keep on calling it a rhino stag roast? I don't know. It's a new kind of beetle, so it's going to be hard to tell if it's really a rhino or a stag. You're asking a lot of questions. Bienfu, do you like bugs? Duh! I love rhinoceros and stag beetles, but what guy doesn't find them fascinating? Right? 
So which kind of beetle do you think it is? Rhino or Stag? Oh, that's a tough question. But guess what? Miss Mogulu taught me a surefire way to tell. I didn't know there was a way to tell. Yeah, but if I do it, you gotta name it after me, all right? Uh... Come on! What guy doesn't wish he had a cool bug named after himself, right? And besides, Miss Mogulu told me that this technique is so good that it's only fair to have a bug named after you in return. So what do you say, man to man? Come on, let's live the dream! Oh, all right. How can I say no to that? Besides, we all did work together to capture it anyway. Yay! Thanks, Laffy Set. All right, show me the bug, and I'll tell you what it is. Miss Mogulu says you need to open up its outer wings and get a good whiff of the thin underwings. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember rhinoceros and stag beetles smelling really nasty under their wings. Is it really that bad? Why not find out for yourself? Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Maybe you shouldn't do this after all, Bienfu. You probably just want to hog the name all to yourself! Well, too bad! A real man never goes back on his word! If it packs a mean punch, then it's a rhinoceros beetle. And if it smells really zesty, then it's a stag beetle. Know about this. Just let him do it, Lafayette. He's already volunteered. I can do this? Just you watch! <laughs> this smell is the most bad, bad thing that ever bad, bad in it! Whoa! He fainted with his eyes still open! Hey, wake up! Wake up, Bianfu! Miss Mogulu, as soon as I smelled it, my nose literally exploded. He looks like he's having a bad dream. <laughs> I spy with my little eyes a kiddo who's spying at my bewitching waist. Oh, sorry. I just couldn't help it. What are those books anyway? Oh, that's a great question. Since you asked, I'll reveal the secrets of my tomes just for you. On the right, I've got my household ledger in the back, and my magic encyclopedia in the front. That one I mostly use for oil blotting paper. What's oil blotting paper? It's a girl thing. The two on the left are my heavy book, which I use for flower pressings, and then my super pop-up book. A super pop-up book? When you open it, it pops out with the force of a raging river! When an enemy has me cornered, I can just open it up facing a nearby wall and pop! Instant getaway! The only downside is that it's a real pain to try to get closed again, so I haven't used it in years. What about the book right in front? That's actually Lair Cake. Whoa, really? Seared into its batter are precious bits of knowledge. Eating it is just as good for your brain as it is for your stomach. Wow, I had no idea that was possible. He's taking this so seriously, I almost feel bad. All of your books are so ugly, Lou. That's really cool! There's no end to your curiosity, is there? What do you say? Wanna take a closer look? Boy, would I! If you really do, then say, I want to get to know you better! Mogilu, I want to get to know you better! All right, I accept. I'll reveal to you my most private secrets. Wow, so that's what's on the other side of these books! I wouldn't have ever guessed that. What the? What are you doing with Mothyset? He said he wanted to see, so I'm showing him. You have no right to stand in the way of his desires. It's my job to protect him as his vessel, especially from someone so wicked as yourself. Also, what you're doing runs contrary to public decency, which is aren't supposed to be decent. These bindings with the locks on them. This style used to be really popular during the Meliodas dynasty. Now that I know you're such a bad influence for him, I'll be keeping a closer eye on you. If you can't learn to take it easy, nobody's ever gonna want to marry you, you know. Like you're a shining example of marriage material yourself. Hey, Mogilu, could you turn them over one more time? I want to see how the book's attached to your belt. Yeah, sure. <sighs> Hey, Ma 
Froggy Lou. I was wondering about that book you have on your waist. The one you called your heavy book for flower pressings. Your curiosity truly knows no bounds, does it, kiddo? Okay, nobody else knows this, but since you're so interested, I'd hate to leave you hanging. My heavy book, the one I use for flower pressings, is none other than a collection of Bienfu's poetry. Bienfu likes to write poems? Yep. You'd never guess it, but he's actually just about the best Moloch poet around. Some people even call him the Great Norman Poet. Here, I'll read you my favorite one. If there is something unimportant happening to the East, I'm made to go there and back. If there is something unimportant happening to the West, I'm made to go there and back. I can never rest nor be at peace. Every day my life is a living hell. That's... heavy stuff. Isn't it? That's what makes it so good for pressing flowers! It's so wonderfully, oppressively heavy. Your face has gone all sinister looking. The map's getting filled in little by little. There's still a long way to go. It's a big world out there. Yeah, that's true. And a lot can happen on the waves. The far seas are unexplored territory for a reason. I'd imagine so. The seasons and the weather can change the sea completely. Oh. Do I sense a budding interest in the sea? Think you're feeling less apathetic about it now? I wouldn't say that. I was just reminded of something someone once said to me. Wow, look outside! It's the ocean! This was a place of worship for Amenoch, the Water Empyrean. The ancients built this sanctuary underwater for the same reason that Eumacia's temples were built underground. But building this underwater couldn't have been easy. Aye. With the Earth Temples, all they had to do was keep digging. Here, they had water to contend with. How did they do it? You can't split the sea like you can a log. They started by stacking giant stone blocks in the shallows, creating an enclosed space. Then they drained the water and exposure. Once they had done that enough times and secured enough dry space, they were able to dig into the sea floor. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The humans believed that by going through such great hardships to build these temples, they could show the depth of their devotion. Additionally, current research suggests the site of this temple once sat on the seacoast. What? Are you saying I'm wrong? No, I'm only reporting what I've read in academic journals. How would coastal ruins sink into the ocean? When the Empyreans began their slumber, the land shifted, and this temple was swallowed by the sea. Scholars were able to prove that the sand and the heavy stones formed an airtight seal around the structure. Later, people carved an undersea tunnel to connect to the temple, bringing it to its current state. Now that you mention it, I think I read that book too. Revised theories on ancient architecture, right? That's the one. Have you read it, Aizen? No, I only read the first edition. The problem with the stone enclosure theory is that each time you expand the enclosure, the innermost stones have to be carried out. Once that was pointed out as being too inefficient, alternate theories were developed. The revised edition has a number of competing theories. I highly recommend reading it. Uh, I will then. So, wait, was that a complete rebuttal of Aizen's explanation? Th that was not my intention. Ah, uh, it's okay. Archaeology is a continuous process of asking new questions and making new discoveries. Prevailing theories change all the time. What's it matter anyway? Let's just get going. There's no Empyrean here, right, Aizen? If you're worried about it, why not flip that coin of his? Heads, no Empyrean. Tails, Empyrean Central. But it always comes up tails! Like I said before, these temples are nothing more than places of worship built by human hands. The current religion started when humans, fearful of natural forces, began to worship four gods they called the Empyreans. If you're concerned about whether or not one is sleeping in these ruins, just remember that their very existence is only legend. Be that as it may, Enominat certainly exists. Aye. But I've never heard a single story of anyone actually seeing. Enominat must be a special case then. Must be. I suppose so. If there were four more like him, and they were all trying to stop us, we'd be sunk. I can't disagree. That demon... 
I guess she caught demon blight when she was looking for her daughter. Yeah, that's what the girl at the inn said. But even after turning into a demon, she's still searching for her daughter. Well, Rokuro, Kuragane, and Dial all remember what they wanted when they were human, right? Demon or not, she's a mother. It's no surprise she would still be protective of her child. It could be that, or it could be something else. Well, I hope that's what it is. I know that must be how she felt as a human, but demons don't have a sense of motherhood or any such thing. You saw how violent she was. She's not Mahina anymore. When she became a demon, she lost all capacity for empathy and love. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. Velvet and Rokuro still have empathy. One demon left unchecked could take a hundred lives. And this one's even willing to attack exorcists. Demons can wipe out entire villages, even cities, just as they destroyed my village. Uh. Thus, my path is clear. Eleanor is right. There's no turning back once you've changed. Perhaps it would be a mercy to grant her peace through death. Uh. Is Inomi not really an Empyrean? What makes you ask that all of a sudden? Well, according to the song Grimm deciphered, Inominat is an eight-headed dragon, right? The Empyreans are supposed to be these holy beings, but using Therians to feed on malevolence sounds more sinister than divine to me. You've got a point there. Empyreans are a type of Malachim, and that doesn't seem like any Malak we've seen. And even less so when we're talking an eight-headed dragon. Is it so far-fetched? What do you think will happen if the Therians come together in one place? Well, it wouldn't be good. My guess is they'd merge together into a giant, horrific monster. The mighty beast will attack us with its eight long, snake-like necks and eight heads spitting hellfire! Uh. I can see your worry. Right? And that's eight heads with only six of us to take them on. It'd be more than we could handle. I'd have to conjure up a double or two. You can do that? Of course not. Then why mention it? Oh! What is it, Lafayette? Do you think each head would act of its own free will? Because if they do, they'd be uncoordinated, bumping into each other and going this way and that, giving us an opening. If we fight as one united whole, I know we can win. If we work hand in hand, victory is ours. Right, everyone? Huh? Us united? Have you looked at us recently? Uh, well, I mean, maybe. It won't open. Is there some sort of trick to it? Well, you could always try busting through it, but I wouldn't. Who knows what sort of traps you might trigger? I know, I know. Look at that diamond-shaped stone in the door. Haven't we seen that somewhere else? You're right. It was on the pedestal with that chalice. That huge thing? You must have some sharp eyes there. I was what was inside that chalice. So, what? That chalice is the key? Somehow I doubt it'll be that simple. Some stones are colored, and some aren't. It must hold some kind of significance. I think you're right. Where are we going? Where's my mom? Kamoana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to- Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. 